Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss premium liability for redeemable coupon. Now here's what companies do. Companies try different ways to increase their sales. So they might offer you coupons, rebate, volume discount, free services, free goods to do what? To increase their sales. So they offer premiums in exchange for coupon offers, rebate, and the whole purpose is to stimulate sales. Now, if these premiums, if these offers reflect a material right promise to the customer, so they're, if they're making a valid promise and that promise arises to a substantial obligation, then a performance obligation exists and should be recorded as a liability. Simply put, if they are promising to offer something for you as a customer, then the company might have a liability because they made a promise to offer you either goods or services. So this is what we talk about premium liability. So premium liability for redeemable coupons. So simply put, you can go to the company and tell them, look, you owe me the service or you owe me this goods. So this is this is what a redeemable, you can go back to them and tell them, you know, give me the discount, give me this thing for free because you made that promise. So premium liability for redeemable coupon refer to the obligation a business has towards its customer who possess a redeemable coupon, some sort of a claim. Could be a voucher, could be a gift card that has not yet been used. So if you have a gift card, somebody gave it to you, you can go back anytime and buy goods and services using that coupon, using that card, the gift cards, and they have to sell you the goods and services. So these coupons represent a liability, again, for the company as they are outstanding commitment for the business to provide goods or services at a discount price or sometime for free. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. So how do we account for those? In accounting for this liability, we typically record unearned revenue or deferred revenue on the balance sheet initially. So the company, if the company received a payment, in other words, if let's assume someone goes into Starbucks and they purchase a gift card for $100, what would happen? Starbucks will debit cash $100 and they will credit some sort of unearned or deferred revenue for $100. So the company has received a payment or sometimes they don't receive a payment. They just make, basically made a commitment to provide some sort of a discount, but they have not delivered the product or services yet. So when the customer redeems the coupon or redeems the gift card, the company will recognize the appropriate portion of the unearned revenue. So simply put, the unearned revenue will go away and will uh, the unearned revenue as revenue and reduces the premium liability. So this process continues until all outstanding coupons have been redeemed or expired. Simply put, they no longer have an application. So it's very important for the company to carefully track and account for these premium liabilities to reflect that liability in the financial statement. Think about it. If they make a promise that they're going to give you 20% discount, on all future sales to someone. Well, guess what? They have to show this liability. Why? Because in the future, they have to deliver their goods and services at a discount. So not doing so will mislead the users of the financial statement and it could potentially have issues with regulators and or auditors. So it's an obligation that you need to record. The best way to illustrate this is to work a couple examples to show you how the concept works. So let's assume a bookstore sells gift voucher with a face value of $100. So you go there, you pay them $100, okay, you can give this gift voucher to anyone. A customer buys one on March 1st. What entry would the bookstore make? Well, they will debit, cash, credit, unearned revenue, gift voucher. Now you can do so, you could also go to Farhat Lectures and buy gift vouchers for your friends, relatives, whoever you want them to pass the CPA exam. Now, 
later on let's assume april 15 the customers takes this 100 dollar gift voucher and purchase books from that bookstore well what would be the entry well they will debit unearned revenue that's assuming they redeem the whole voucher and the bookstore will credit revenue because they did earn the revenue now they also let's assume the cost for the sale is 60 dollars they will debit cost of goods sold and they will credit inventory where did that 60 dollar came from i just made it up just the cost is six let's assume the cost for these goods were 60 dollars let's look at another example so the previous example was basically a gift card where the company received the cash and they have an obligation to deliver now let's look at another example let's assume a company issues a premium coupon offering 20 percent discount on its product and a company like this in the real world if you heard of this company bad bath and beyond they do that they offer basically discount so the company has a year end december 31st that's the assumption throughout the year the company issued 500 coupons of these 500 300 were already redeemed by customers well if 300 were redeemed by customers by year end we still have 200 coupon are expected to be redeemed next year now let's assume that on average the sales value per transaction is 50 dollars on average and the cost for the transaction is 30. this is just basically making assumption so first we have to calculate the outstanding coupons how do we do so remember we still have 200 coupon outstanding times $50, 200 coupons times $50, that's the total expected sales. Then we're gonna multiply this by 20%. In other words, we're gonna have to give discount, account for discount of $2,000 total discount. What do we have to do? At year end, we have to debit some sort of an expense. We're gonna call it discount expense debit. And we are going to credit some sort of a liability. We're gonna call it unearned discount or some sort of a premium coupon liability of 2000 why because in the future we are responsible for selling the product at 20 percent discount which as far as we're concerned that's a two thousand dollar expense for us now why do we do that why do companies do that why bed bath and beyond do that to to stimulate sales to increase their sales they make those you know they give you an offer of 20 percent now the following year when the customers come back and they redeem those coupons basically what we do is we debit unearned discount which is a premium liability for the amount let's assume they redeemed everything two thousand and we will credit the expense of two thousand okay the company reverses the liability and recognizes the actual discount amount provided the customer and this is basically how this works what should you do now go to farhat lectures and look at additional resources such as multiple choice additional exercises lectures that's going to help you understand this concept better whether you are studying for the cpa exam cma exam or any other professional certification this is a concept that you need to be comfortable with basically liabilities we are dealing with liabilities liabilities comes with different format this is one type of liabilities good luck everyone Stay safe and invest in yourself.